I sort of think the yield thing is really a problem, actually, to markets. So not to disagree with Tim, but I think that, to your point, supply, whether that's government supply, which we've talked about, I think there's also a lot of corporate supply. So you have pressure on the curve. And then, obviously, we always talk about, you know, it's just math, right? As those rates go higher, then the, then the high multiple stuff should get cheaper. I think that's going to happen. The other thing really was home building, which I know we'll get to more, but this is just, I, I do feel like it, hit some sort of point, actually shorted some today of the XHB, just as a broad, you know, it's home builders and building materials and stuff like that, because I do think we're actually now with the pressure on the consumer and the housing prices where they are and mortgage, price, mortgage costs where they are, we're at a little bit of an inflection point. It gets to the whole consumer problem, particularly in the back half of the year as we head into the holiday spend. We've got student loan repayments that got started again. We've got people just paying higher interest rates across the board. And then people, if they cannot tap the equity in their home, what good is that equity in their home if they do uh, you know, hit a speed bump here? You say the rates have capped. Yeah, I'm in the camp that they, even if they were to make slight new highs, you're not going to have an important move higher in rates. But what is remarkable about this strength in the dollar is that you have... Um, Sugar bringing out to multi-year highs, orange juice, you've got cocoa, and, of course, crude with a strong dollar, ignoring it completely. Yeah. It's, it's, to some extent, that commodity moves, which is an inflation thing, um, is important. We shall see about rates and how much more they can go. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating that you're getting that move in crude because, you know, every 1% move in the dollar typically is a 3 to 4% move in oil prices. And, and I get that OPEC is, and OPEC Plus is, is showing some, uh, some accord. I, I would just point out two things. I, I don't love mega cap tech because of multiples or anything. In fact, I, I think the markets are, are looking very toppy. And I think there's major divergence between the leading indicators and the forward PE and all the things we talk about. I'm just going to say that in a world where we're challenged by growth and, and higher, you know, higher rates are going to hurt a lot of other companies. Mega cap tech stocks, once again, are the ones that tend to outperform. Um, and, and at the same time, we were talking just three, four weeks ago about the breadth in the market. And right now, if you look at industrials have underperformed the, the, the S&P by about 7 percent since October. Transports, actually about 4 percent. Transports by 7 percent. Small caps today. Those moves today were pronounced, and they show you how the market is going to react to higher rates. So it's hard to argue with that. And to some extent, yeah. the, the move in the queues, remember, it's, it's outperformance, but it's making up underperformance. The queues since the market peak are still underperforming the market. So go back to October of a year and a half ago, meaning this big move is simply making up for the losses preceding it. Whereas S&P dropped 27% from its peak, QQQ dropped 37%. We're still undoing that week. But, but what about the fact that the semis, to me, again, on a relative basis, are right back up near that high? In other words, they, they, there have been a couple periods of underperformance, but, but, but you know, basically near all-time highs against the S&P. And, and that, to me, has been kind of the nitrous part of the Q's trade. Well, for sure. I mean, semis are acting better. Or, or this, the biggest tech of all, Apple, its relative performance to the sector peaked almost a year ago. It was September 30, uh, a year ago. Apple, the biggest of all. So does that necessarily, I mean, so... Well, but so the then point is that it's away? not all tech, right? It's right. case because I mean, Apple dropped almost 18% recently. It's bounced, but it's yep. peaked at drop drawdown. The market was only down 6. So it, it's case by case. The question is, is it right to favor tech from here? Because right. it's all about from here. Or not. My hunch is I don't think tech um, is an overweight at this point. I would either be equal weight or on. We, we, we've heard a lot of people, though, um, for a long time say don't favor tech. The, the multiples are getting too high. The trade is too hot. You know, the run is too steep. And yet this is where we are. This, is, this seems like the sector you want to be in. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Tim brings, it makes a great point. So the SMH, if you want to use that, made an all-time high, I think, November of 2021. Sold off, obviously, like everything else got back up there at the end of July. And it looked like we put in a classic double top, sold off on the back of NVIDIA, and here we are back at 157. That is absolutely worth watching. I'll try to answer your question and say, the higher rates go, the more expensive these stocks get. And at a certain point, I think you'll see a rotation out. And energy is going to be, again, be the beneficiary of all of this. Yeah, you're saying that it's a problem. Rates, high rates are a problem for the tech trade. So yes. are you starting to pare back? Well, I, I did sell some NVIDIA and sold some calls. But I think that we talk about things aren't a monolith necessarily. So I still think a name like Google and Meta, it's in the tech trade for sure. But it's not anywhere near the multiple. I mean, Google's Microsoft. Led, multiple, by what? The way. Google's told Google. of the mega cap techs. Google's taken over leadership. You're right. So, um... But I'm not going to trade around it if I still really like the story, which I do for Google. It is 20 plus time, 23, four times, but I'm sticking with it.